Today's candidate is a 1950 something GMC 450 truck backhoe digging machine thing. As far as I know it's been parked down here for around 20 years. This engine is seized up tighter than a Dutch wallet. I took the spark plugs out, filled the cylinders up with a concoction of diesel fuel and automatic transmission fluid. You can't win them all. And you know that concoction that I poured in there didn't do the trick after a calendar year. I don't think anything is going to. Howdy folks. I'm back down here with the GMC 450 truck backhoe thing. Had a lot of comments in the first video as expected. You know kind of telling me granddad's secret recipe for freeing up stuck engines. You know boiled crocodile tears or or whatever. Anyway there's one that I kind of want to try which is this stuff right here, Evapo Rust. Don't know very much about it. I've seen it on other YouTube videos. All the tool restoration guys seem to use this stuff. It claims to do all kinds of wonderful things, mostly involving dissolving rust without hurting anything else. So, yeah, we're gonna try it. Got a gallon of it here I bought locally. Cost me about 20 bucks. What do we have to lose? So the consensus from the comments on the YouTube video seems to be that this is a 302 GMC engine which I guess is different from from the uh, the regular stove bolt Chevy engines and of course they all say it's a highly desirable engine but if I know anything about YouTube comments, every engine is highly desirable. Three-cylinder Yugo, found at the bottom of a lake. Highly desirable engine. All right. So I'm just sucking out any remaining oil that might be on top of the pistons, using this, basically a big syringe. And then we can administer the evapo rust. I don't know if it's heavier than oil, like water, or not. Now, one rookie mistake that I made, I didn't suck the water out of the piston, or out of the cylinder. So if there had been water sitting on top of the piston and then I put my diesel fuel ATF concoction on top of that, the water is heavier than the oil, so the oil basically does nothing. It gets displaced by the water. Ooh, number six is full too. Well, that's interesting. Injecting evapo rust. I don't know which cylinder is stuck or if all of them are stuck, so we're just going to fill them all up. Obviously, we'll have to change the oil. Alright, I put two of these big syringes of evapo rust in each cylinder. I guess we'll come back in 24 hours and see see what we can see. And we're back. I think it's been three weeks since I put the evapo rust in the cylinders and it hasn't done any good. It's still locked up just as tight as it ever was. So I came down here today to verify that and then we're gonna suck the evapo rust back out because I'm pretty sure it freezes and it's starting to get pretty cold. So, I don't know, maybe this engine would still be useful as a core to somebody, so we better not completely destroy it. We'll suck that evapo rust back out and move on with life.
Well, that's not a good sign. That means the evapo rust never made it past the rings. So I don't think we ever had a chance. All right, that's done. Cylinder number one, five, and six were still clear full, which means the evapo rust never made it past the rings, which is the exact same thing that happened with the diesel fuel ATF mixture. It never made it past the rings. So yeah, I guess that answers that. Can evapo rust unstick a stuck engine? Maybe, but not this one. So, yeah, that's it. We're done. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.